so much, Madam Chairwoman, and also I'd like to thank the ranking member for uh, having this very important the um, witnesses very, very much to helping to clarify before the uh, people of this our great country as to what is going on and what would be some good things that we should be doing uh, as Congress to protect uh, and create a, a balanced environment when it comes to, uh, especially when it comes to these apps that are being used by tens and tens and tens of millions of people in our country. Um, Americans are, are very concerned about how their data is being collected and spread online. And it's clear that an overwhelming majority of the public agrees that individuals should have control over their personal information, how it's used on the internet. It's important that we have this hearing today so that uh, not only to discuss protections that this bill brings to the table, but to shine a light on ways that our personal information is spread, monetized, and in some cases abused by many of the uh, organizations, corporations, and applications that Americans are handling every single day. Um, Mr. Brody, there are countless examples of mobile phone applications collecting more data about consumers than they need to function the app. Facebook Messenger, for example, an app designed for messaging and video calls, collects health and fitness data, financial information, and location data, none of which are necessary to facilitate communication. Can you explain why these apps and websites collect so much data on us and what they do with that data if they don't need it to function on the app? And how would this legislation address this situation? Thank you for that question. Uh, put simply, the, the, the apps collect that much data because they can and because they can monetize it um, by either using it themselves for advertising or other purposes or selling it to other companies who can find other ways to monetize it. This bill has really strong data minimization provisions that would ensure that when you're using an app, that app is only collecting as and using and transferring as much information as is reasonably necessary and proportionate to the services providing you and your expectations based on your engagement with, with that app. Uh, this is incredibly important to ensure that there isn't superfluous extra information floating around uh, that could be highly sensitive and that can be uh, abused uh, either through, through by predatory actors or that could be leaked in a data breach. Uh, and so it's, the, the data minimization framework in this bill is extremely strong and uh, central. Thank you, thank you very much. There's so many questions I wanna ask you, but now I'm gonna go to Jolina uh, Cavesma. Uh, Ms. Garezma, this bill rightfully focuses attention on enhancing protections for individuals 17 years of age and younger. Children and teens' brains go through stages of development in which they gradually develop their critical thinking skills such as... How does this make children and teens uniquely vulnerable to privacy harms? I'm sorry, um, I think you cut out for about 10 or five seconds there and I missed the question. Uh, when it comes to the bill would protect our team, how is it that the, the way the a brain, young brain develops, how would this bill help uh, make sure that teens are uniquely, who are uniquely vulnerable, how would this bill help with their privacy issues? Thank you for the question. So we've known for quite some time now that the human brain uh, isn't finished developing until perhaps around their mid-20s, right? And this means right now that my child, who is in high school, is still very susceptible to all sorts of images um, and uh, online uh, content um, that can influence her, um, her sense of self. So, uh, and so what I'm really appreciative of about this act is the section um, 205 about targeted advertising. That, that's gonna put a ban um, on, uh, on advertising for children under 17. Um, and it clearly, uh, it clearly bans third-party advertising um, on its face. 
except under Section uh, 226B, Romanet uh, I through three, what happens is there is now an exclusion to what targeted advertising me means. So first party advertising, fine, that's well and good, that's gonna be allowed, um, but in Romanet one and three, uh, advertising or marketing to an individual in response uh, to any ask, that can include third party advertising. So there's a loophole here in which uh, targeted ad third party tar targeted advertising can come in. And given what we, what we all know about uh, developing brains, wanna make sure that we, uh, we close that loophole. Thank you very much, my time is fine.